they, they began to return back to Israel, to the ancient homeland, only at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th. Because for almost 2,000 years, they were scattered. Remember, after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, they were all, all scattered. And then they, by the way, the Romans, they, they were the one who gave the land the new name Palestina. That's why we have the name Palestine with us. See, they, the Romans named the, the, the land Judea after the Philistines. It was more like to humiliate the Jews. So that's why we have the name Palestine since then. So the Jews were scattered and then they, they began to return back at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th. And they began to build small villages all over the country, but the first city was Tel Aviv. The city Tel Aviv in 1909. Uh, it is the most inhabited area in Israel. We have the city of Tel Aviv to the right, 450,000 people, but what you see to the left is the neighbor city of Tel Aviv. So we have like six cities surrounding Tel Aviv. From the north, Herzliya, Ramat Gan, Nebrak, you go south, you have uh, the city of Hulon. So we have uh, all together, we're talking more than one million people, one and a half million people, that they live in Tel Aviv and the city surrounding it. So it's a high percentage of the population. If you are saying that all over Israel we have 8 million 300,000, Tel Aviv and the surrounding alone, it's a million and a half. A small neighborhood in Manila. No? Something like, no, it's like a, a tenth of Manila. A tenth. But it, it's true that Tel Aviv, it's the, uh, it's the business center, all the, uh, the foreign embassies, including the Philippine embassy is here in Tel Aviv. All the embassies are here. Now, the airport is not far. It's like out of Tel, out of Tel Aviv at 10, 15 kilometers. We will pass nearby the airport on the way. But you can see all, all that we see, it's, it's, it's new construction. You see all the time, you see new development. Look at the construction cranes, wherever you go. You see the new development, all the like the big buildings here, it's new. Yeah, all the, yeah, Tel Aviv, it's like, they're saying that it's one of the highest real estate in the world now. Yeah, the real estate here, it's like very, uh, you can compare it with New York, with Tokyo, <laughs> with the big cities, very high. So for the youngsters, the young couples, uh, they cannot afford uh, to buy a house, maybe to rent, but not to buy. So they all live outside in the suburbs or they go somewhere else. Shopping malls everywhere. Yeah, it's a Jewish town. Yeah, it's a Jewish city. All the cities around Jewish. The largest university is in Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv University, one out of five universities. The second largest is in Jerusalem. We have a big university here, shopping malls everywhere, restaurants, uh, and they have, of course, the promenade along the beach. Very nice, uh, nearby the Mediterranean. <coughs> The, the former government, actually the parliament is in Jerusalem. The parliament in Jerusalem called the Knesset, the Knesset, and all the governmental building because, I need to clarify something, for the Jewish people, the capital city is Jerusalem, but not in the eyes of the nations because uh, Jerusalem, there is a debate over East Jerusalem. The, you know that East Jerusalem was taken by Israel during the Six Day War the old city, the Temple Mount area. So the Jews are saying now we are back to the sites that we have left 2,000 years ago. The Muslims, they don't see it in the same eyes. For the Muslims, like we took their, their place or their land. So the nations, they are in between. So the nations, uh, they, uh, they don't really recognize the whole city of Jerusalem as the capital. That's why the embassies are here and not in Jerusalem, because there is a debate uh, over that. But as far as the Jews are concerned, or the Israelis, the capital is Jerusalem. See, 
there is a railway here, the train station. I mean, all in Tel Aviv there are several train stations, but this uh, railway runs all along the coast to Haifa and then to the south of Israel. But notice now we are going left, so we are going to leave the coast and we are heading to the mountains, to Jerusalem. So we are going east. From here to Ankarem, it's about an hour. I hope uh, less. Depends on our pilot, Joseph. And it depends on traffic. So in about 10 minutes, you will, you will see the airport on your left. 10 minutes from now, Ben Gurion Airport. The airport was named after the first Prime Minister of Israel, David Ben Gurion, David Ben Gurion. He was the first Prime Minister in 1948. You know that the official birth uh, date of Israel, it is May 14th, 1948. That's the day that David Ben Gurion uh, have declared the independence of Israel, and he did it in Tel Aviv. It was in the middle of the war because when the United Nations decided to divide Palestine into two states, the war began. This was the beginning of the War of Independence. It was the, the partition plan was not accepted by the Arabs. They were very much against it. So we could have like two states. The decision was to have two states living side by side, a Jewish state in Palestine and a Palestinian state, but it was not accepted by the Arab side, and they opened the war. So Ben Gurion declared independence just as the British left. But the British were here after World War I. They had the mandate over Palestine, and then when they left, Ben Gurion uh, declared the independence, he made it official. And that was also the, like the invasion of the Arabs and the beginning of the war between us and them. The Israelis and the Arabs. Okay, Tel Aviv, the name Tel Aviv is mentioned in the Bible only once, once in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 15, Tel Aviv. But it's, it's actually a name of a place in, in uh, nearby Mesopotamia, in Babylon. We gave the name in a different meaning, Tel Aviv. Tel in Hebrew stands for a biblical site. So the biblical site represents the past. Aviv in Hebrew, it means spring, meaning new beginning, new life. So Tel Aviv, from the old times to the rebirth of the nation back in their ancient homeland. That's the meaning. Okay, so Tel represents the past and Aviv the, the future or the rebirth. Sarel meaning, uh, it means minister of God. Minister of God. Sar El. Sal Minister El God. In the, in the Old Testament, uh, it was just a, a, a village or a city nearby Babylon, outside Babylon. No, no, no special meaning we think to the name. We gave the name uh, of Tel Aviv. It's a new, like a modern meaning. We gave it a modern meaning. Yeah, the, the meaning in the Bible we don't know. It was just a name of a place in, in Babylon somewhere. I don't know if they knew like the, uh, what was the meaning of the name back, but we gave a modern meaning. Because Tel, it's like archaeological site. We call it uh, Tel. Tel, it's like, uh, like Megiddo. Or all those ancient cities are called Tel. And Aviv, it's, an, it's the Hebrew uh, word for spring, new, new beginning. Tel Aviv. Old and new.